So Dr. Phillips, if, if I was a patient with chronic pancreatitis and I was coming to see you in clinic and you were gonna assess my uh, nutrition and my nutritional status, what might I experience? What kind of tests and evaluation would you normally do? Thank you for that question, Dr. Forrest Mark. This is really an important um, set of, of tests and an important conversation that occurs again on an individual basis between the chronic pancreatitis patient and the individual provider based on that individual patient's needs. Again, I, I can't emphasize enough how important it is for the patient and the provider to have a common understanding of what's going on for that patient in order to be able to start uh, from a shared set of expectations and a, a, a goal that, that the patient and the provider have set together in terms of maintaining good nutrition. And so the aspects of testing that may occur for patients when they come into the clinic for nutrition assessment would include the normal pancreatitis history, history of acute pancreatitis, number of attacks, those types of things as well as what their current symptoms of pancreatitis are, including pain, maldigestive symptoms of diarrhea or oily stool, certainly the important symptoms of weight loss and how far off of their baseline weight they are, and any other symptoms they may be having. It's important to take a detailed dietary history. And so what are the kinds of foods that the patient can tolerate? What are the kinds of foods that a patient can't tolerate? What are the patient's food preferences? Because it's important to determine what the overlap and the exclusion is between those categories for patients in order to be able to expand them to a well-balanced diet as much as possible. In addition to these histories, there may be blood tests to assess run-of-the-mill things like blood counts and electrolyte levels or liver function tests. Also an assessment for diabetes if that hasn't previously been done by another provider. Other blood tests for specific vitamin and mineral levels may also be of import in these settings. Lastly, imaging tests may be useful in these settings, things like CT scans or MRIs, again, as a way to gain additional information about the status of the pancreas and how that might match up with the patient's nutritional status about whether there are other nearby compromised structures, et cetera. Lastly, Sometimes patients need an endoscopic test, a test done via endoscopy to look more closely at the pancreas or perhaps even an intervention. And those kinds of tests can be discussed even sometimes during a baseline nutritional assessment if those, um, if those procedures are, are very evidently necessary. And Dr. Phillips, you, you did not mention one imaging test. I wonder if you could comment on it, and that's a bone density uh, tests that patients might uh, get recommended. I wonder if you could uh, tell the audience a little bit about that and why it might be used. Thank you for raising that issue. An important complication that occurs frequently in chronic pancreatitis is mineral bone disease. And so chronic pancreatitis patients may malabsorb vitamin D and calcium over many years before this problem is recognized. When that happens, they can develop low bone density. And so one of the tests that the pancreas provider may order would be a bone density scan. This is a series of x-ray-like tests looking at specific areas in the bones to determine what the density of those bones are and determine what the risk of fractures are. Patients with chronic pancreatitis may have more brittle bones and be at higher risk of fractures. And so it's important to know that uh, both to be aware of it and try and prevent any fractures in the future, but also to be able to supplement uh, both vitamin D and calcium adequately to make sure patients are getting enough of those nutrients um, along with their balanced diet. 